Hey guys and welcome back. So today we are going to look at the graphic card review. Uh, we are reviewing the ASRock Phantom Gaming 6900 XT which is currently the top dog GPU from AMD. I know what everybody is going to say bro why are you reviewing GPUs it's not available the prices are insane right now but actually this review is very relevant because we are going to compare between the 3080 and looking at the current prices to see which one is the better buy right now. But first let's see the unboxing. So I'm sure everyone is aware but the 6900 XT comes with a retail price of around 1000 US dollars but considering this is an AIB model consider, consider to pay a bit more which I would say around uh, 1200 to 1400 US dollars which translates to around 6000 ringgit Malaysia. The dimension of this card is also very large with a length of around 330 millimeters. A thickness of around 56 millimeters and a width of around 140 millimeters so the large dimensions of this card actually makes it a bit of a tight fit if you're planning to fit it in a very small case like an ITX or SFX case so keep that in mind even in this uh, quite large MATX case with this is the fan to Fantex fan to evolve even this I had to mod to fit the GPU in Another thing is that the GPU is actually quite heavy so you can see the very prominent GPU sack. So if you're planning to use this GPU especially if you're using the, the normal orientation not vertical you need to be prepared to purchase a vertical like a GPU holder or GPU bracket uh, to make sure that it doesn't sack because I, I am honestly the, the sack is very severe. Despite its large size and, and um, the considerable weight the card itself is not very thick it's actually not a 3 slot card is around 2.7 to 2.8 so if you're using like in an NL200 there's a possibility that you can fit fans underneath the GPU so that's that so on the side of the GPU there's an LED on and off switch uh, which I think is very nice because it means that if you want to switch off the GPU you don't have to go switch off the GPU switch off the lights you don't have to go into the software another thing is the 3 8 pin uh, connection so this actually helps if you're planning for extreme overclocking and increasing the power limit of the GPU which is possible especially on AMD cards but make sure that your PSU can support um, and has the right amount of um, 8 pin PCIe uh, connector this extra headroom in terms of power delivery is great especially if you're planning to water cool the card later so on the back you can see the typical 3 display port and 1 HDMI output as far as connectivity is concerned. However I am a bit disappointed that uh, ASRock choose this way because I know that the reference uh, AMD cards has the USB Type-C which I think is a bit more useful and a bit more unique uh, and has more uses instead of the standard you know, 3 display port and 1 HDMI. I think this is where uh, one of the places where I think that ASRock cut corners and try to save costs which is a bit disappointing. So now on the back we can see a very nice uh, back plate which is actually made of metal which is preferred consider compared to the usual plastic. Uh, there's also thermal pads con connecting the back of the PCB to the metal back plate and I really like this because there's a functional use and helps to dissipate heat away from the GPU and this leads to cooler temperatures. Overall I think you guys can agree that this is actually a very nice looking card. The build quality is solid and it has a nice presence inside the case. 
Now on the topic of looks, uh, we cannot forget the all important feature which is, which is the RGB So actually controlling this uh, graphic card, uh, you need to use the SVOC, um, ARGB SVOC Polychrome Sync Which is not the best, but I would say it is functional I won't complain anything about it, I'm using it and it's fine Although the customiz customizability options are a bit lacking Compared to, you know, like Asus uh, or even Zotex options so the RGB is actually very well diffused and the color transition is very smooth as you can see However, my disappointment is that the RGB is only on the middle fan and the other two fans beside it doesn't have any RGB So in my opinion, if you are planning on using it as a normal orientation, it looks good but it doesn't look very nice in terms of if you plan on mounting it vertically So now on to the more important aspect of a GPU which is the performance for the first game, we are looking at Horizon Zero Dawn We can see that the 6900XT is actually trailing behind the 3080 With a maximum frame rate of 140 and average frame rate of 113 This is behind the 3080 which averages around 120fps and has a maximum frame rate of around 152 So off to a bad start for the 6900XT So on to the next game uh, that we're going to test To test is the Red Dead Redemption 2 So in this game we can see that the 6900XT is actually uh, ahead of the 3080 But just like previously the difference is not that much uh, Less than 5% uh, So the the 6900XT averages for around 75fps While the 3080 averages for around 69fps However both are decent performers uh, So Keep in mind that the resolution is right now I'm using is ultra wide, so it's a bit more taxing than just normal 2K resolution. So the next game we are that we are going to test is actually Far Cry 5. So in this game again, uh, the 6900 have uh, a very small lead, but it is very small with the 6900 XT achieving around 95 FPS, while the 3080 only averages around 88 FPS. But again, the difference between the two GPUs is very small, around 5%. So I'm not sure if although there's a difference, although you can say that 6900 XT is a hit, but whether or not there's actually practical difference while playing the game. I think that is up to you but uh, I will discuss about that uh, during the end of the video now on to Warzone here we can see a very significant difference between the 3080 and the 6900 XT so here you can see that the, the 3080 actually achieves only around 113 FPS average uh, with a maximum FPS of 152 and there's, there is a lot of dips um, sometimes below 100 so you have to keep that in mind on the other hand, the 6900 XT is a very strong performer with an average FPS of 140 and a maximum FPS of around 176 So there's a very big difference So the difference also continues to Call of Duty Cold War um, The difference is also similar in which the 6900 XT leads with an average FPS of 157 and a maximum FPS of 202 this is in contrast to the uh, 3080 which only averages for around 138 which is uh, I would say it's, not, it's still not bad but it's not as good as the 6900 XT and the difference is actually quite noticeable Borderlands 2 is another game in which the 6900 XT leads so the 6900 XT actually has an average FPS of 109 with a maximum FPS of 142 this is in contrast to the RTX 3080 which only manages around 92 FPS So the 3080 cannot even reach 100 FPS average The maximum uh, FPS for the 3080 is 135 So uh, so there's quite a lot of games in which the 6900 leads However now the tables are going to be turned uh, in favor of the NVIDIA GPU Because uh, as far as Cyberpunk is concerned I would say the 6900 XT and the 3080 is neck and neck At around 62 FPS However In terms of ray tracing the Cyberpunk is far ahead Especially considering the 3080 as a DLSS so now the next game that we are going to see is Shadow 2 of the Tomb Raider So in terms of this game actually in terms of pure rasterization I would say the 6900 XT is ahead But the option of 3080 of having ray tracing and now even DLSS is inside Shadow of the Tomb Raider So the performance is 
I guess I would say better but keep in mind in this game if you're switching on with racing you're going to get a performance hit so remember the great performance that the 6900 XT has over the 3080 previously that all disappears as soon as you switch on ray tracing in terms of ray tracing i think it's pretty clear by now that the 3080 is so much better especially considering the dlss so the max fps for the 6900 xt is even lower than the average fps for the 3080 now the sound test from here we can see that as long as you run the fan of around below 85c the sound is available so now uh, we are running uh, unigen superpositions to stress test the gpu to see how does the gpu handle heat keep in mind that this is malaysia even at idle the temperature is around 40 so right now uh, at 100 percent load the gpu temperature is around only around 70 low 70s so that's actually very good with the fan speed of around 80 percent so i would say in terms of cooling potential the cooler and the fan combination is excellent all right so conclusion time um between the 3080 and the 6900 xt which is the better buy I know some people will say what a stupid comparison because the 6900 XT is obviously the top tier GPU from AMD while the 3080 although a very good performer is the premium but not the top uh, best GPU from Nvidia offering so why am I comparing this? okay if that were the case I mean one is a $700 US dollar graphic card which is the 3080 and one is a $1000 dollar graphic card so if that were the if that were the case then obviously the 3080 is better because it has almost the same performance as the AMD GPU but has a lot more features in fact during my previous 3080 review I did say this and things are going to take a turn for the worse for the AMD graphic card once you consider ray tracing because the ray tracing performance uh, on the AMD cards is actually not not very good so until today six months later AMD ray tracing is still proving to be an inferior choice compared to the NVIDIA counterparts and then uh, to make matters worse uh, AMD has no uh, answer to NVIDIA DLSS as far as to how to increasing uh, frame rates so uh, you can see why I do feel that AMD has a major handicap right now but again six months later the prices of GPU has already dramatically changed right now you cannot get a 3080 for under i mean i would say around 2k us dollars but you can get the 6900 at cheaper at around 1200 to 1400 heck uh, if you want to save some bucks you can even sometimes find a 6800 xt selling for around i would say around 1k us dollars so right now i mean i cannot say that nvidia has a better value in terms of uh, current pricing right now so and thus our choice is now blurred again on which is the better choice with that in mind for some people the answer is actually quite straightforward if you die die one ray tracing or you find that most of the games you play has DLSS or maybe your workflow involves you using CUDA or maybe you're a heavy streamer and really want to take advantage of the NVIDIA NVENC encoder I think the choice is obvious you should always go for nvidia if that is your priority however if ray tracing for you is just a slight bonus or games you mainly play don't even have the lss for example i play warzone and i play pubg and i play valorant right now as three of my main games none of them has any uh dlss support and i heard warzone is coming but even at now until march it's still not here um I would save my cash and just get the 6800 XT or the 6900 XT simply because if you've seen the comparison before when you peel, a back, peel back all the features peel back all the DLSS and everything you can see that in terms of pure rasterization the, the AMD cards in general are still better I mean dollar for dollar at the current prices there's also the other thing that 
I mean, this is just a personal opinion. But if you look at the FPS counter that I'm showing you right now, you can see that um, the 6800, uh, the 60, sorry, the 6900 can uh, sustain a higher frame rate and it's actually more stable. I always feel like if I'm playing um, AMD GPUs, it feels more stable and less like clunky and less jittery. I mean, it's a bit hard to explain. But if you see the counter, you cannot. Um, see the AMD GPU even dropping below 100 but there are times when the NVIDIA um, GPU starts and dips the frame rate below um, 100 frame per second there's also other other factors that might shift in the future into AMD's favor for one the VRAM buffer I know that certain games like Doom Eternal in the highest texture or obviously Microsoft uh, Flight Simulator can uh, use RAM more than 8 or 10 GB so AMD has a slight leg up there so there are other also other advantage uh, of course uh, right now Nvidia has the, its DL, DLSS but AMD is already planning to launch um, from what I've heard uh, the Fidelity FX Super Resolution which is the DLSS counterpart um, in this year at least uh, for the 6000 6, series of GPU so that is coming and that might turn the tables back into AMD favor also uh, we must keep in mind that uh, this is the first generation of AMD GPUs with ray tracing, ray tracing. so right now uh, console, console is mainly on AMD hardware so if you're using an AMD GPU uh, there's a possibility that in the future the game support would improve because most of the game developers would try to implement their games using AMD hardware because it is compatible with the console but this is just speculation and as far as right now game support is obviously better at Nvidia that is without a doubt okay guys anyway thanks for watching the video until the end um, do consider to support me by subscribing and do the usual YouTube stuff like and share if you like this video and if you have any questions just drop it down below in the comment section usually if you see I always reply to my uh, to any question that you post uh, underneath um, I try to help out you guys um, anyway so I'm out see you guys next time